We had a little bit of weaker than expected inflation figures from the U.S. We had a pretty solid bond auction. What does it mean for Fed? For the Fed at the moment, certainly if you listen to what they've been telling us, they're basically saying, OK, they're going to keep going with their rate hiking cycle. And, and certainly that's been consistent with what um, Fed President Powell said uh, during the week. Um, so I think that that would, that would basically say to me another two hikes this year, possibility of two next year. The Fed say three. I'm, I'm a little bit less convinced on, in that regard, just given the weakness in inflation. But certainly for the Fed, they'll continue what they're doing at present. OK, do you agree with that, Peter Shafrik? Or actually, could it be the beginning of some turbulent times for kind of growth in the U.S.? I, I, I would go even further um, than what uh, the other Peter just said, uh, because if you look at the underlying fundamentals of the U.S. economy, it still remains very, very strong. And we have to keep in mind that uh, at this particular um, time of the year, there's quite, a speci there's quite a few special factors that might be driving um, CPI. And if some of these special factors might not be as strong or as, um, um, as weak as uh, expected, the headline figure might move a little bit. And if you look at underneath the bonnet, <clears throat> there might be quite a bit of uh, rounding coming in too. So I, I don't want to be um, sort of too critical about this figure that came out, the CPI yeah. figure that came out. But at the, at the underlying strength is still there. The labor market is still strong. Um, and therefore, everything that the Fed is looking at still indicates that they will have to go. Um, and we suggest that at the end of the year, they will have hiked four times. And there's a quite possibility that they will keep going into um, next year as well. But, but how does the Fed actually deal with the flattening yield curve. So let's bring up that chart, which is definitely a chart that matters today. It's probably the, the chart that, for me, matters the most. Um, in the past, inversion of the yield curve means that there is an impending economic slowdown. Why would this day or would this time be any different? Well, that's it's certainly true um, when you look at that. And what the Fed has said, however, is they have not disregarded it entirely, but they have downplayed it to some degree, which suggests to me that at least in the near term, in the near term in that case for central bank being the next six to nine months, is not going to change their view of the world materially, particularly as not uh, if, the, if the data remains consistent with what they've been looking for. If I may say, if we have done quite a bit of analysis on that, or my colleagues have done quite a bit of analysis on that, and what you can see is even in the, um, in the previous episodes, from the point when the yield curve inverted, it was always quite a considerable period of time until the economy actually slowed. So even if we see what we're currently seeing, and even if we take it at face value, it does not necessarily imply um, that we have a slowdown directly around the corner. Do you agree with that? Broad, broadly, I do. I think, I mean, the, the two tens was always, you know, a reasonably decent predictor of a recession, particularly when you got inversion. But it's the absolute levels that, that kind of matter here, right? And certainly, you know, pre-GFC 2006, we had a Fed get at around 5, 5.5% five on, on the headline uh, mm -hmm. Fed funds. We're talking about a kind of maybe the Fed getting to 2.75%. So the absolute level is way, way, way lower. Companies and individuals can refinance themselves at very cheap levels. So it doesn't necessarily mean we're going to tip ourselves into recession.